Um, but we got a question here from someone with an incredible, incredible <laughs> username. <laughs> Pussy yeah. Destroyer 83619 <laughs> asked us, didn't like how the A block ended. If Okada really wins the B block, then it feels like New Japan doesn't like to take risks. It's always the same people at the top. This G1 was particularly interesting due to ZSJ, Kenta, and Cobb having really outstanding runs. It's people you don't typically see dominating the NJPW scene. Sure, they might get title matches and a main event every full moon, but you know they're a ceiling for those types of wrestlers. This G1 felt like they were doing away with those ceilings, but it just ended up being Ibushi winning again. We've already seen this, and maybe that won't go too far, the story if he's going to win it three times, but I just, I'm just i just not engaged for it. Hoping Cobb wins B block, because if Okada wins, it will feel the same way as Ibushi winning A block. I'd be way more excited for Ibushi versus Cobb than Ibushi versus Okada. I know NJPW likes to slow burn through character development storylines, but I feel they need to be more flexible. How do you feel about this sentiment? And do you think talent wise and storyline wise, new Japan is stagnating? Well, I think you kind of touched on, on some things with this question earlier, Josh, I, I think, you know, like you mentioned, I think they have done s- some new and fresh things this year. You know, we had the United empire kind of form and launch there. They were pushing, Will Ospreay in the mix. We had Kota Ibushi, Shingo. I mean, previous to COVID, I would have never thought Shingo would have been the IWGP World Heavyweight Champion. Like, I always thought he was going to be a never guy, you know, maybe in IC before they they merged that. But you have a guy like Shingo uh, in the main event. And so, like you said, they they have been trying and and doing some new, fresh stuff. You know, they had the Ospreay-Shingo rivalry. I mean, they elevated that junior rivalry into a, a heavy Wait, rivalry. Those are two guys that were, you know, made event best super juniors, and now they're fighting over the world title. Um, so I do think they are trying to, to do some new stuff. They are trying to elevate some of these guys that are, are the top wrestlers. Uh, but again, less people are watching. There's less buzz, so people are probably missed out on some of the changes and stuff that they were trying to do this year. And then again, it, it's kind of storyline versus business. At the end of the day, like they are still trying to recoup. They have to figure out what's going to be best for business, but also make storyline sense. Like you said, storyline wise, it does the story tell of Abushi trying to recover um, from pneumonia and doing something that nobody's ever done before. And, and you know, like, again, like they're trying to make Abushi special and they're still, like you mentioned, like he's still not that level. So they're, they're trying to give him stuff to get him to that level. And so being a guy, sounds like Roman Reigns, <laughs> <laughs> acknowledge Abushi, <laughs> acknowledge me. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I just think that they're trying to get into that next level to try and get him as a, a top guy. And so this is their way of doing it. Yeah. I just, I feel like, um, you know, just like you guys said, it's like business versus storylines. Um, they have to go with what makes money, but like you said, they've done some experimenting, which maybe will pay off in the long run. Like we've said a million times, they've got three nights of wrestle kingdom to fill and they've got shows after that so maybe what they're doing with like this Cobb run and this zsj run is that they're kind of testing the waters to see if these guys have it in them to main event later on um maybe they're seeing the reaction to you know the positive reaction these guys are getting with the runs and maybe that will pay off for them and beyond wrestle kingdom right yeah that's a great point you know um it's just because your favorite guys aren't in the finals of the G1 doesn't mean that it's lost on management and lost on the bookers as to the upside with them and the potential that they have, you know? Um, and I think that that has been highlighted throughout the G1. The guys that they have pushed, like Jeff Cobb, doing something historically that nobody has ever done in the history of the G1, whether they were domestic, Gaijin, doesn't matter. It's never happened before. So there's that um, dominance. And then you look at Zack Sabre Jr. and what he did going through literally the, the murderer's row of, of the, you know, company and like just fucking everybody up. And I mean, <laughs> there's a lot that has come out of this G1. But, you know, the funny thing is he mentioned early on, he was like, this company doesn't like to take risks. And I'm like, yeah, we've been saying that for almost four years now and this is not a new sentiment or you know the very fact that there's a new japan strong in america going on where guys from all the other companies in in north america not named wwe get to work together and that they have working relationships with AEW. that's like 
mind blowing <laughs> because that's not the kind of thing you'd expect from a conservative company like New Japan. Yeah, they're extremely conservative. So, you know, you take a company that's conservative, you take a, a fantastic booker like Gato, but he's also formulaic, and then you, you throw all of the different things that have come up against them over the last two or three years. I mean, you know, I'm not trying to like cap for them, but a lot of other companies wouldn't be in doing as well as New Japan has done, given you know the circumstances. So, I don't know. Um, as far as like, you know, the sentiment, I think most people looked at this G1 on paper and knew it was not going to be that great. You know, that that's just the bottom line. I think that they they've done some unique and some interesting things. There've been some good matches, but at the end of the day, when we kind of previewed this G1, when we looked at it and the feeling was pretty much the same across the board. There was not a buzz. There was not excitement, not in the same way that there was last year when that all time B block was, you know, out there. And I think you kind of almost have to look at this G1 and just say, it's a little bit of a wash, you know? And the thing that people are, are forgetting about throughout all of this is that we have no fucking clue what those three nights of G1 are going to be like, what they mean and what the build from now till then is going to look like the, it now could they mishandle it and botch it yeah they could i'm not telling you it's going to be fantastic but there's a lot of possibility there for them to do something great especially if the crowds are coming back if the constraints are being lifted because as soon as we get the talent from north america coming back and as soon as we have the clap crowds gone and people can make noise again there there isn't end to this you know storm you know there's light at the end of the tunnel for sure testify <laughs> well i mean it's just true it's not like that's not a cap thing like it's just the fact of the matter is like you know we can identify what the issues in the company are very easily and we can see that they're not going to be here forever and when they do go away the company that for better or for worse, is still the best in-ring product in, in the world. And that's not like a, you know, a fanboy saying, just go look at the ratings. They put on the best in-ring product, bar none, night in and night out. They just do. And once you put them in the right element and give them the right talent, they're going to be fine. 